Hey everybody. I thought I would just come on here and go for a walk. So I've been in my office um, super busy and I need to get outside. So I'm actually walking down an alley because I figure there'll be fewer cars this way. And I just got off a, um, a, a group call with some other clergy women. And we were just talking about how we, right now in this era, we're doing a lot of things that we're not used to doing. Things that are just um, out of the ordinary, things that we never thought we would ever do. And then being called to do other stuff that we may not feel comfortable with or that God is leading us to do. And how do we do that? How do, how do we, how do, we um, do things and, and press into things? And, and it was funny because this uh, one friend, she just said, just, just do it afraid. Just do it afraid. And there's a lot of there's a there's there's a lot of power in that because if we decided that we were going to wait until we were confident in everything that we did, and had the know-how for everything that we were supposed to do, there's a lot of stuff that would never get done. And so, I want to encourage you, and and there's a lot of people in this group who have pressed into so much to do things that they've never done before, and I want to applaud you in that that you've pressed in to do things that. Uh, God has called you to do and to do it with the reality that it might not look pretty. It might not be the best. It might not be the shiniest or the funnest or the happiest. But you're doing it because you know it's what needs to be done. And so you do it afraid. Or you do it um, with a little bit of intimidation. Or you do it the best that you know how. And so some of the churches right now, they're having these really big flamboyant um, technical shows that they have the ability to put on. And one of the ladies in our group, actually, um, there was just her. She just got behind her pulpit and put up her little thing, and she just does it. Hey, Catherine. Hey, Amara. Like Amara. Amara, I love Amara because Amara knows that she is committed to speaking the truth and and just doing what God has called her to do. And, and it doesn't have to be big and fancy. It needs to be full of truth and, and knowing that the truth is what has the power. And as we're faithful to the truth, then God will bring the change and the anointing and whatever he wants to have happen through that truth. And so as we, again, do things that are different out of the ordinary, it's not a matter of how pretty it is, it's a matter of how truthful it is and how obedient are we being. And it's amazing how much has been done and I, in, in this time frame. And one of the things that um, we talked about this morning was the fact that all these people around the world right now on Sundays can't go to soccer, can't go to baseball, can't go to football. They're all sitting at home. And we can invite them into church in a way that we may have never been able to do before. And so to take advantage of that and... And, and be able to say how, so that most of the people, and you guys can actually comment about this as well, um, how many more people are actually watching your videos than you would actually have face-to-face. -face. And typically there's more. And so to invite people into saying, hey, did you know we're doing our, our church live now? Did you know? And, and invite people into that. It's a completely different mindset, but it's elevating the opportunity to have spiritual experiences and spiritual discussions with people that they would have never had because they're out on Sunday mornings doing their thing. And, and so I just wanted to come on here and do something a little bit different. So something that I did yesterday was um, trying to get all this tech stuff, new tech things. So I've been doing this for a little while, so my tech level is a little bit different than your guys's. but my goal was to put my um, count coaching course on a platform where people could just go and buy it. Okay, so that, that that's layers of tech that I have no clue how to do, but I'm happy because yesterday I sat down and actually figured it out and got it all put together. So I'll drop the link into that later. But again, it's a matter of I know that I have a message, I have healing knowledge, I have revelation, I have a God that people need to know, hear, and understand. And I can either let fear be the thing that keeps me from um, making that accessible to other people. Or I can say, I'm going to just work it, try it, make it happen. And then give other people the joy and the thrill of being able to have access to it. And so I wanted to encourage you guys 
to look at what do you have available to you and then if you need help so I actually reached out to like eight different people I'm like I need help figuring out how to put stuff online and I have I've had four different one-on-ones with different people who just know how to do that and one of them said hey look into this particular platform and just try it and so I did and yesterday morning well I did one yesterday morning it took me the entire day to go through the platform figure it all out and I and it all was for free in the end it was all for free and so being able to do that took the courage to say I'm embarrassed that I don't know because there's so many people who do know I'm afraid that I'm not going to get it done right or it's not going to be pretty enough or I'm going to say I'm going to do it because it's what God has called me to do he has shown me what to do I've watched people get the benefit of that and I'm going to and I follow through with that and that's why Amara just goes live all the time and just speaks what is God speaking to her she speaks the message she speaks the word she speaks the truth and the truth changes people and when we remember that we'll be more inclined to do the weird things the different things to make the truth more meaningful more accessible so the other thing that we talked about in our consult group today or peer group today was um, elevating the conversations regarding um, spiritual things and do we have those conversations of where are you spiritually and so I tell people often that I was in my 20s before anybody ever asked me where I was at spiritually. Think about that. I was at church all the time, and nobody ever asked me, where's your relationship with God? And if anybody would say, well, how's your relationship with the Holy Spirit? I'd be going like, well, what do you mean? Because we didn't even talk about the Holy Spirit. We, we only talked about the Bible story, typical Bible stories. And so, to, to, so the passage I had been reading this morning was um, 1 Thessalonians. And, and because it's, I read five chapters a day, First Thessalonians is all only five chapters long. And, and it's Paul writing this letter going, I can't wait to see you guys again. I can't wait to get out of here and to come and see you. And hopefully you'll be good when I get there. And I thought, if Paul, when Paul finally shows up with these people, what is, what is he going to talk about? What, what, what are they going to, what, what is he going to go? And he, when he goes, they finally gets out of all this travel or out of jail and he gets to go and see these people, and they're all like, it's so great to see you. He wants to talk about their faith. He says, I want to strengthen your faith. He talks about their encouragement of their, of their biblical belief and their biblical knowledge. And so when we get to that place where we're going to be together, what are we going to be talking about? What, what are we going to actually embrace with each other? Are we going to look with each other in the eye and say, how's your faith? And who have you been witnessing to? And how has your um, exposure um, through digital media been impacting other people? Have you been able to share your faith well? And it's something that I've been trying to encourage um, pastors and other um, Christians and even lay people to go online and share your testimony, share your origin story live, and just say, this is who I used to be, and this is who I am today. This is because of what God has done, and He can do it for you too. And it can be really simple. It doesn't have to be complicated or hard or technical or fancy. It just needs to be done and then let God do the increase. And so I hope that um, this little moment of encouragement for you guys, hopefully I don't get run over here, um, to, to do, what you, what, do what God has called you to do, what God has laid on your heart. Do it with enthusiasm, even if you're afraid. And say, you know what, God, it might not be pretty, but the disciples weren't pretty. They were a bunch, a bunch of stinky fishermen, right? And, and they, they made a church that lasted over 2,000 years. 2,000 years. And so I want you to know that, um, that it's meant to be an encouragement to be able to say we can do, through obedience, the things that he's called us to do, and he will make the increase. And so as we speak the truth, continue to speak the truth boldly, and I hope to see you again. So comment below on how you are leaning in during this time with new things that you've done afraid, right? See you later, guys.